Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to be going through what I call my passageway here on second deck on the port side. This is where all the curatorial offices are now. To get in, you come through that, uh, if you look forward of turret number two, there is like a square box built on the front of the barbette. That has a deck gear locker in it, a life jacket locker, and a ladder well, this one, on the port side. So every day when I come into work, I go around turret two, uh, come through this ladder, and then I'm in this little vestibule. Going forward from here are enlisted berthing spaces. But from here aft was designed to be warrant officers berthing. This space was originally the warrant officers mess. And outboard of this, there's a uh, storage area uh, this is also now known as the Curatorial Conference Room, and uh, it is where we store our models. Uh, then in this space back here is where we store all of our blueprints, and it is one of my co-workers' offices. So, uh, this space is originally the Warren Officer's Mess. By the 1980s, we have so much fewer warrant officers and, and crew in general on board that the warrants get moved up with the rest of the officers. So they're in normal officers' berthing cabins um, and eat in the wardroom with everyone else. So they don't have their separate mess like they did during World War II. So this space, initially in the 80s, gets repurposed as a weight room. And at some point later on, they start using it as a chapel and uh, a meeting area. So we've got footage of the ship's marine detachment in here in uh, probably 87 or 88 doing, uh, ha having some sort of meeting or training evolution or whatnot. Right at the end of the ship's career, around uh, 1989, Admiral Paul Reason shifts his flag to Battleship New Jersey. Battleship New Jersey's flag spaces had been removed by this point so this was part of the series of spaces that was chosen uh, to be converted into flag spaces. So this is uh, the flag meeting room. Originally, this space, the original flag meeting room, would have been what we have as CEC right now. Yeah, so uh, heading forward of this, or excuse me, we're heading aft now. Uh, this is... Originally, the Warrant Officer's Wardroom Pantry. You can even see, here on the bulkhead, the remnants of the passing port. The food would come out of the Officer's Galley, it would come back here, and it would be plated or um, whatever else needed to be done, and then it would be served through the passing window there into the wardroom. Uh, this space is also modified at some point, if we look up at the overheads, uh, probably in 89 again. So. Uh, you can see there was once a partition bulkhead here. That is because this was part of the hallway to access this uh, stateroom here. And then so from here over was the pantry. And then uh, at a certain point that stateroom gets converted and this space gets converted. At various times throughout the ship's career this was also the uh, band instrument storage compartment, and I'll bet it had a couple of other uses as well that just aren't recorded on booklets of general plans. So coming out here into the passageway, um, we've got the barbette for turret number two right over here. What was probably once a water fountain, but uh, seems to have been deleted at some point in the ship's career. And We've got this weird table thing, which I have not seen on any of the other Iowas. Um, there is no way to support this upright. It's just covering three of these uh, transformers that were added, these step-down transformers. Uh, I have no idea what that was envisioned to be, but none of the other Iowas got it. We got welding stuff. You got all sorts of lockers. Uh, you'll notice there is a door there behind the whiteboard, a door here. These were originally three Warren Officer staterooms, and then um, during the ship's career when it's converted into a flag space, these two 
become an office, I think, for the Admiral's PR team. You can still see the weld marks in the overhead where that was removed. You can still see where the sink was for this particular stateroom. The bed would have been right here. Uh, if you come over here, there is a mounting point in the overhead here and up here where there would have been uh, bunk beds. So the lower bed would have been here. That would have been a traditional like metal one like you see in officer staterooms. And there would have been a uh, like cage, like chicken wire type uh, mattress suspended over that by chains. So you could put two people in here, especially during World War II. Uh, and then you can see in the museum era, this bulkhead is cut out to turn this into the curator's office, uh, which I would not have done if I was curator at that time. The office is plenty big without it. But uh, this was originally a storage area for the chaplain's gear or um, the warrant officers or whatever else between when it was used as a stateroom. So heading back out into the P way, here we've got the water heater. This feeds the warrant officer's head over here. We know it's a head on second deck because it's got to step up to it because we're walking on the armored deck. Uh, we've got another former stateroom right here, which was converted into some sort of office. We're not quite sure what. Um, this stateroom, which is now the education office, retained more or less its original configuration, so much so that it still has the original World War II fan up here. One of our volunteers recently got it running again, but it's still got the nine inch tiles on the deck. It still has the green paint. Uh, it has the original desk, which folds down for a typewriter. Uh, so for whatever reason, these other spaces get heavily converted. This one does not. So this office uh, or this stateroom, when it gets used as an office is called the NIS office or Naval Investigative Services, which later becomes NCIS, uh, a show that people watch for many, many years, I'm told. Uh, they've done a couple episodes on Hornet, I think, and Iowa and some other museum ships, so I, I'd watch it for that, but I've never seen any of that show. And you'll notice that the drawers in here still have the original masking tape uh, names of what was stored in them. That is original to the 1980s when the ship was last in service, so we're not removing those. Uh, continuing down this passageway, we have another set of spaces that would have originally been staterooms. You can tell because it's got the plate over it that says what the room number was. Uh, this one was used by Mardet. Uh, at some point, it seems like uh, you don't really see a partition up there. Ah, oh, you do see it welded here. Yeah, at some point, this was uh, a pair of staterooms, and it got divided into a larger office space. Uh, probably around the same time that they're converting the flag spaces based on the uh, desk in here being the same type or that could just be what Long Beach was doing at the time, so they happened at different points in the 80s. Um, we know that the Marines use this as some sort of office. In fact, what does Mardet Admin and Training Office is what the uh, compartment checkoff list says. And many of these spaces have accesses like this one through the holding bulkhead uh, into where the uh, tanks are. Remember on Iowa class battleships, you can get into that from the inside of the ship through manholes like that. While on older, uh, while on the South Dakota class battleships, you have to climb out on the uh, outside of the ship on the basically standing on the armored belt to get in there. Uh, coming back, we've got some air conditioning spaces and we've got a, a uh, set of offices that were used by the master at arms. Again, these were all staterooms at one point that uh, get converted into offices. So the master at arms is like the ship's police force. So Iowa class battleships have both a Marine detachment on board, which is like the ship's military, if we had to land soldiers and a master at arms force, uh, which are gunners mates that uh, do like the law enforcement sort of stuff on the ship. Uh, continuing back aft near the master at arms, we've also got the legal officer's office. 
That one's interesting because it's completely gutted right now. They clearly removed the bed and, and uh, other stuff that was originally in there, the original furniture. You can even see the mounting points on the deck where they were because they didn't retile. But there's no new furniture in there replacing it. So it's unclear uh, what that would have been set up as in service. Yeah, so this office right here was originally the material maintenance management office. Um, there is another 3M office down below that is a much larger space. Uh, here we have our oral history studio, which was a weapons office. This one's really cool uh, because we, as we go by, we're stripping off some of this gray paint and revealing the sailor art underneath of it, which at some point was painted over. Uh, this looks like the ship's, well, it's definitely a 1980s crest because of the tomahawk and harpoon. Um, so at some point the weapons officer office, they painted this on there and then it got uh, painted over. You can see that the phalanx uh, radar dome was painted over as well. So we've been uncovering that periodically and uh, you got your surface warfare pen on there. Uh, so this is a big double office right now. I'm not quite sure what this was originally. And this brings us to the end of the passage. Uh, this one is cool. It's where we record nowadays. But at the end of the ship's career, this was a computer training center, or uh, up here it's listed as the word processing center. Uh, basically, it's an all-volunteer military at this point. The Navy is having trouble getting recruits. Uh, compared with going to an Air Force base or living in an Army fort as opposed to uh, being stuck out at sea for months at a time. Especially on an elderly ship like this one, where what skills are you learning as a gunner's mate in the 16-inch guns that are then going to help you in your civilian career? Uh, what skills are you learning here that applies to modern-day technology because so much of this stuff is antique? Uh, by the time the ship is in service in the 80s. Well, they installed a bunch of computers on the ship that are specifically here for the crew to learn how to use computers in the 1980s and 1990s so that when they go back to the civilian workforce, they have uh, experience with things like Word and Excel and, and whatever the 1980s equivalent of those are uh, to help them get jobs later on in their career. And then this brings us to the end of the passageway, which is one of our damage control stations, the post office, and the officer's galley. So what's another space you would like to see us do a walk of, a walkthrough of in the near future? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting the channel. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.